Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we will be looking at exporting, rendering. Now those new, those maybe from iMovie, may not know what rendering is. And considering there's so many features about rendering, I just want to quickly clear up any confusion. Now, when you apply an effect, your computer has to calculate how the effect is going to affect the image. So let's say we've got a color correction on this clip here and we boost the reds, the computer actually has to sit there and quickly think about how it's going to affect the image, like by boosting the whites into red space, what is that going to look like? And your computer has to do something called rendering to work that out. And when Final Cut needs to render, it's shown by this orange bar here. But what Final Cut Pro 10 does is that you can see the bar is slowly getting eaten away. Now when you're not doing anything, it's just going to sit there and render it for you. So it's going to calculate in the background all the changes you make, which means that we can then get nice smooth playback that is not stuttery or horrible to look at, or blurry because it hasn't got a full resolution render yet. Now that's basically what rendering is, but we also render when we export the image or the video sequence. You can see that if I zoom out here I've got a nice little film sequence going on here and over in the share menu you can see there's some nice preset ones. I will do tutorials on DVD but what we're looking at today the two main ones is export movie and center compressor. Now if you do have £30 or $50 I would strongly recommend buying compressor. Now I know you guys a lot of you will have compressor uh, I think it's 3.5 that was in Final Cut Studio 3 uh, I'm not sure I have it installed as well but unfortunately Final Cut Pro 10 only works with compressor 4 so if you want to be using compressor with your new editing software you are going to need to buy the new one and it is worth it in the sense that you get a bit more control over the editing uh, this is Jamie Wiles by the way, I didn't mean to click in the viewer. So if we just press export movie, that's going to give us a nice little dialog box. It's actually very simple, quite straightforward to look at. You can see we've got an options and a summary. In the options, you can see that we can export to any of these preset settings. Now, these are cool, but you might want to do some different ones. And you can actually use compressor to create yourself some export settings. And then, using the share menu, you can export using a compressor setting, which is really handy. However, I haven't actually created any. We can also scrub through really quickly and see what our video is going to look like, which is quite nice. And afterwards, we can open it with whatever we want. I use QuickTime Player 7 instead of QuickTime Player 10 because there are some clear advantages of QuickTime Player 7, uh, which I may go through in a video if you'd like to see that video uh, post a comment below and I will let you know why um, QuickTime 7 is better than QuickTime 10. And then we go ahead and press next and that's going to tell us where do we want to save it and desktop is fine. You just press save and then it's going to come up with a render bar or an export bar and that's going to tell you how long it's got left, how far through it's completed. You know what a loading bar looks like. Imagine that. But I'm not going to do it because I also want to talk about sending to compressor. Now if I just press send to compressor, that's going to send our whole sequence, the information, to compressor. And we're just going to wait for compressor to load really quickly. And we're going to see how compressor deals with it. Over here in this dialog box, we can see that there's loads of options, there's loads of presets. Basically, these are your export settings. You remember when uh, we pressed share, we had a few options, some different codecs that we could choose. Basically, these codecs are also here as well, plus loads more. You can see there's a 1080p video sharing, so you can see YouTube. That will be a very popular one. Um, there is an option to send straight to YouTube. However, from my experience, it exports it with too high a bitrate, and then the video file is massive, and then it takes forever to upload. So that's why I don't use the built-in YouTube exporter of Final Cut Pro 10. But that's just me. 
Back over here in Compressor, we can see that we can just grab one of these. So I'm going to get this 720p video share. And you can just drag it on to uh, our project. The reason it's stuttering is that every now and then my external hard drive goes into sleep mode. It's just waking itself up. And there we go. We'll be back in about two seconds. Over here in our viewer now, we can also see that we can scrub through, and we can also, if we just press plus here, we get a nice full screen view, and you get a before and after the different rendering. You can see that we're not actually getting any difference, it's going to retain our quality, albeit a slightly lower pixel count because we're going from 1080p to 720p. But the other important thing is that we can set in and out points. Now, why would you want to set in and out point? Well, let's just say we just wanted this opening scene. This opening scene ends with Cheryl Halliwell walking up to the house. And there we go, it cuts to black. Now, I can just press O on my keyboard, and you can see that there's now an arrow there. And then, when we go ahead and press submit, it's only going to export from the in to the out point. Now, that is really handy because you don't always want to export your whole scene. You might just want to preview one scene on your DVD player, see how it works, uh, nice and dandy. And then, here where it says source, that's basically the output, the destination. Now, we can add some destinations here. You can see there's a few plus buttons. We can add a local destination. And then in desktops, we could create a folder, and we could call it compressor destination. And this is literally just where your final video clip is going to end up. When it compiles this into a single video file, it's going to be wherever we tell it to be. You can see there's some preset ones, which is fine. Desktop. Don't always use a desktop, but it's handy for quick file access. And then we just drag this destination onto not here, because it's going to create a second job if we just drag it onto the whole bit. We want to drag it to the actual job, the actual 720p HD video share compressing. And you can see that it now says compressor destination, which is that location we just created. And then, if we press submit now, it will then start encoding that into a video file. The last important thing that we can also do is obviously add multiple tasks to our job, if that makes sense. So. If we look at some of the other encoding settings, um, let's just grab the Apple ProRes. We can add it to our project, and that now means that it's going to encode it twice into two different formats. But the, what you need to do is make sure that it's going to be called something else. Now, it will by default give you the actual file type at the end in name, especially with the Apple ProRes, it very often does this. You need to make sure that the names don't clash because what you don't want it it to do is to render your first um, setting and then to just save over it with the second setting and then be sure obviously to put the destination into that file as well you can see obviously now um, there is a name clash and we can just add in ProRes here and then that will get rid of the title clash and then you can save your project command s and you can see where you want to save it and basically this is just going to save the list of tasks now this is really handy if you think that maybe you're working on the film on this computer but you know that you actually want a render savvy computer you might want to send it to your friend's macbook pro or mac pro sorry and you can literally just save the compressor file but what you need to be sure is that they also have the project files if you're sending it straight from final cut um, just so it actually has something to render. But that is, in a nutshell, how to use Final Cut Pro, how to export, how to use compressor as well. It's really simple. You've got your settings, your destinations, here is your project and list of file formats. And then, like I said, when you press submit, in fact, if we go ahead and press submit now, it's going to want us to name it automatically. I'm just going to call it untitled. And we can see that we've now got a render bar here that's going to tell us how far through it is. You can see it's got one job and two targets. Um, if we scroll down here, you can see we've got a list of what it's going to be doing and what it's actually doing at the moment. Um, but it, it's yet to start. It's just going to be collecting all the information from our Final Cut Pro timeline. And obviously the clear advantage from using this as opposed to just exporting from Final Cut Pro 10 is that I can go back into Final Cut Pro 10 and carry on editing. 
So I hope this was useful. Um, hope you're enjoying these series. Um, like I said in my previous video, remember to request tutorials and I will be covering as many of the features of Final Cut Pro 10 as I can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.